Warning, this podcast contains violence, sexuality, gore, and other horrible and disturbing things. Listener discretion is advised. Also, the hosts of this venture are ignorant dipshits, so please do not take anything they say as fact. And enjoy the show. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. Today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. The atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It is our basic human right to be fucked up! A second plane now has crashed into the other tower of the World Trade Center. Put chemicals in the water that turned the friggin' frogs gay! The defendant shall be incarcerated for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. You are not machines! You are not cattle! You are men! We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. For this episode about f- Fatal Familiar Insomnia and sleep in general, I'm going to try and roll a joint and then smoke it and have that for the poison. So, what's your poison? <laughs> So I have brought Ood a present. It's actually a present. This is for you. Oh, no. You didn't need to do that. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay. I don't know how to use any of this. You got to. Oh, my God. Please let me do it. Like Please let me do it. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free. Pull around. Pull around, Leon. No instructions for him? No instructions. Okay. He oh, has no. to figure out how to roll a joint okay, with a sure weed roller. Is, is, like, given fairness, make sure oh, yes. Make, well. make sure set up. It is a brand new machine, so it's going to be not the easiest to roll with. Mm. But I did buy Ood a weed roller. There's a second set. Mm. Okay, well, gotta second paper. Yeah, I got to get that out of there. So it should be set up, though. Oh, and juicy papers. I like juicy papers. Oh, start I- with the weed. Actually, start with the filter. I'll give you a hint. Start with a filter. There are filters. Start with a filter. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know I have to bend this thing and it goes at the end. Are you recording? Yeah. Yeah. So I just brought down pot brownies from my dear friend Tama. Who sent them I'll to me. I'll have a nibble. But nibble. a Tam- small there's, nibble. There's, pot, there's, like, there's a couple of them. Tama South? Yeah. One of our lovely patrons. She's amazing. Okay. Do I just roll it up like a little thing? And these are actually really good. Oh, it, it tastes good. Like, yeah. there's only oh, a slight It tastes like a brownie. Yeah. I'm going to roll it like that. Oh, that's more than enough for me mm. because I don't that really That seems like... to be the right size. Are you trying? Are you rolling it by hand or rolling it using the machine? I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. One hour later. Now yeah, open so it up. Like, made this and open it up. Yeah. Oh, it's a joint. Team got made a joint. It's Do you want to go smoke that? <laughs> yeah. Let's go smoke that joint. I rolled a joint. Go okay. Smoke okay. Uh, pause on the track. We're gonna go out and smoke my first rolled joint. Your first well rolled joint. Yes. The rest were diapers. <laughs> it's like blowing like something sticky. Word to pre cum dicks. I'm with my team in this bitch, and we all getting lit. I mean the weed hella loud like a teenage chick, and we've been smoking for a minute. Yeah, we blowing on the gun. Alrighty, so we are back from enjoying our joint. Um, ratings on the weed, and more importantly, ratings on the joint. Don't hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, for. I I watched you over your shoulder rolling yeah. that joint, yeah. and you had some in uh, some prompts and encouragement. Yes. I'll give you that. Yeah, Car- Carly was a really good like joint sensei. But your first is joint? that racist? I don't know. No, no that's fine. Okay, no, you're just speaking know. a different language. It's fine. It's just Japanese oh for teacher. Yeah, just oh, Ood was using Callahan. the rolling machine, mm-hmm. the raw rolling machine, raw brand rolling machine. Yeah. It's it has arrows. It's easy to use. It's no, it's easy to use. I own one. It's all, honestly like it's all I use for rolling joints. Yeah, right my now. my partner stole mine, and then I had to buy a new one. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so <laughs> Oud's first joint rolled on the raw machine was better than my first joint rolled on the raw machine. So there Yay. you go. Do it, you remember your first <laughs> joint? Like ever? it was a very similar. Yeah, I do. It was a very similar size to or very similar to my first rolled joint mm. and we smoked it and it smoked just fine it smoked yeah. really well yeah there's yeah. holes on both ends yeah it was perfect yeah. um as far as the weed itself um i'm gonna give it 
Like it's definitely a CBD heavy. I've I've caught that much. Yeah. Um, and you said three percent THC. Yeah, three percent. Wow. I don't know what that says about it or me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give it though, in the same vein as a Jack Herrera or a Blackwater. Oh wow! Um, because it's not C- THC heady, yeah. but I haven't smoked THC in eight months, so it's yeah. really hit me pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. Oh yeah. Yeah, this this is the strain I usually smoke. It helps me get to sleep. I'm gonna and uh, I enjoyed rolling my first joint. I got I got real giddy. I was real happy about it, and I like that. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. It looked really cute. I didn't smoke any of it. I just had a little nibble of the uh, brownie. Yeah, of the wonderful brownies that we got from Tama. Yeah, thank uh, you. I would have to rate the the joint itself, the rolling, mm-hmm. as a ten out of ten. Ooh. Yes. 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 Hey. Um, oh boy! Uh, as being an avid stoner, I don't feel anything. So, sadly, that's probably says more about me than the weed. <laughs> you get into a perpetual stage of a dream. She would have bouts of paranoia about things that didn't make sense. Once the sufferer can no longer sleep, a downward progression ensues. She looked like she was being tortured. How could we ask this person to keep going? My family has a disease. It's a genetic disease. There's this family in Venice who've had this disease for 200 years. Nobody ever dies from lack of sleep. That's impossible. There was a 50% chance that I had inherited the mutation. It was a typo in my grandmother's DNA, a deadly typo. Eight weeks of waiting for the result. You just got to focus on the good because there is a whole lot of bad in this situation. I don't know. Sleep is a weird thing. We spend a third of our lives doing it. When you really think about it, we fall in it, into an unconscious, vulnerable state where we can be attacked or eaten or... Like, it doesn't seem advantageous to survival. I had our nipples pinched. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> when we sleep, that's what might happen. Yeah, Having your nipples pinched. <laughs> Someone might come pinch your nipples. Yeah, that's, that's, how, that's not really on the top of my list of concerns. That's the worst thing that could happen Sage, to Sage, that's a danger we all live every no, day. No, the, <laughs> the, no, the worst thing to happen while you're fast asleep is for someone to touch the bottom of your foot. I Can you imagine? So that reminds me of like <laughs> when I was a kid, the way to test whether my cousins were actually sleeping mm-hmm. or fake sleeping was to pull their toe. Because if they were Ugh. fake sleeping, you pulled their toe and they'd go, ah, and they'd scare you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, no, I was the youngest the cousin. Like, give me your foot. I'm going to do it to you right now and see if you like it. So yeah, <laughs> give it to me. I'd rather get <laughs> give it to me. That's what she said. Like, I would rather have a bucket full of peppercorns Imagine crammed up my ass and have someone tweak my nipples while I'm sleeping. That's butt. what she said. Hmm. Yes, I, I much enjoy it when I'm awake. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so... Uh. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine being awoken to that sensation? I still be, feel it. I feel it and no one has touched yeah. my foot. It would be way worse <laughs> than having someone tweak your nipples awake. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's having the bottom of your foot like... Pshht. Way worse. Uh, I'd give it uh, oh. even. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm feeling both of them, and I dislike yeah. both of them. I dislike both of them, but I think I dislike the foot thing more. Well, I don't know. I feel I just, less I'm, violated when I'm touched on the foot. I would be scared that someone would like, that they're going to hurt my piercings. <laughs> yeah, when I had my nipples pierced, it was, yeah, I'd be yeah. it's way, it was way more sensitive. It's, it's like, I'd be scared that they're going to like, oh, yeah. like, like or do like something with the piercings yeah. and like pull them weird or sn- get snagged on do you something. Live in fear of getting them caught on something? Yes, That's, when I you're washing with I a loofah. I live in fear. Or loofah, or like, I live in fear of uh, Afghans, like the oh blankets. My God. Yep. Oh no. The you always have blanket. To, yeah. I, I live in fear of crocheted and knitted blankets. They'll get hooked on there and it'll because, pull and it'll really hurt. Because I have gotten my nipple piercings caught on on like crocheted or knitted blankets Ooh. and that makes me shiver Fuck. <laughs> everyone is like old, everyone's like the oh worst, my god my nipples the worst thing was when you're like half awake in the morning oh and but the just, pain like, getting them up the pain getting them um the, the pierced was so worth it i i got mine out <laughs> uh, i took mine out i don't know 
I don't know. Sleep well, exists and is observed in mammals, <laughs> birds, <laughs> reptiles, <laughs> amphibians, and some Sorry. fish and insects. Let's talk about boob pain. Yeah. It's the last thing I would get pierced. Yeah. I would get a Prince Albert before yeah. I would get my nipples pierced. Oh, really? Yeah. My husband has well, he had both of his nipples pierced, but I think he got he took one out. Yeah. I don't like Prince Alberts. They yeah. I had a friend I had who a had a bad Prince Albert. I have a friend who lives Prince in Prince Albert. Oh, no. I am from Prince Albert. Okay, <laughs> if you take your Prince Albert out and try to pee, you have to plug one of the two holes to keep the pee from coming out in two different directions. I am aware of this. I have one more hole, and it's legally um, a flute, I think. I'm not going to say too much, but I had a bad experience involving my Volva and a Prince Albert. Oh, oh it probably gets oh. like, oh, got hooked. And, don't want to hear it. And let's just end it with that. Mm. Yeah. So, sleep is observed in fish, <laughs> Animals and even some simple animals like nematodes who only have 300 neurons and Richard Bigley. Yeah. So sleep is observed across all these animals. Now, evolution is pretty good at evolving things out that makes things vulnerable, that like puts you in a state where you're less likely to survive. But yet sleep still exists throughout the animal kingdom. Like for a third of the time, almost across the animal kingdom, we are vulnerable. Yikes. So. What, are, what is so important about sleep that we're sacrificing that? Last night, while you were sound asleep, so was the rest of the animal kingdom. Ostriches sleep. Platypuses sleep. Fish sleep. Flies sleep. But for something so routine and universal, sleep is actually pretty mysterious. Why would creatures so regularly enter a state when they are vulnerable to predators or unable to do important things like mating or eating? What is the point of sleep? As we get sleepy, so this is what happens when we sleep. As we get sleepy, our pineal gland produces melanin. Some people take melanin supplements to go to bed. That's because it's a natural way to ease your body into sleep because it's the same chemical that your pu- your you pineal melatonin? gland. Yes, melatonin. Yes. I used to take that. I took that straight for like four years. Take, yeah. I take melatonin every once in a while. Yeah. It's not healthy to take it every day. Melanin yeah, exactly. is a Which coloring is like, in your skin. Yeah. Yes, melanin. But melatonin. Me- melatonin's like a happy It's a brain chemical. chemical. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, no, I take it don't every take once it every, in a while. Take it every once in a while. Don't take it every day because I just got off of it and it was like literally like quitting smoking. Yeah. You build a tolerance to it like yeah. anything else. The hypothalamus measures change in light and sound, and basically when it has less light and less sound surrounding it, it tells the body to relax. That thing's oh. coming onto you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going, it's going down. Oh, yeah. no. That's all right. Ood, save her. <laughs> Thanks. I'm saved. <laughs> <laughs> Adenosine is a byproduct of energy production. So as you work throughout the day, adenosine is produced as a byproduct. And there's a direct correlation that the more adenosine in your system, the sleepier you are. So the longer you work, the sleepier you get. Uh, the brain stem is what finally shuts the brain down, producing a chemical called GABA or gamma amino butyric acid. Cool. It relaxes muscles, slows breathing, and reduces all forms of arousal. And oh. when you take a, a puffer, that is a GABA inhibitor, and that's the same effect it produces in you. Interesting. Neat. There you go. Where Slows can I buy some? Down. Asking for a friend. Pharmacy. Yeah. All right. Just like, I can just be like, hey, can no, I get some GABA? No, you need a prescription. Yeah. So stage one of sleep is non-REM sleep. Figure REM stands it. for rapid eye movement. That means when it's you're- It's a delightful gr- band. Oh, yes. Think about losing religions. Oh, yes. Wait, what? what? Losing my religion. That's like me Superman. in the corner. It's a good song. Superman is a good song. Yeah. Yeah. It's me in the spot. Or it's I the end of the world. Oh, it's yeah, the it's great. Yeah. It starts the with the earthquake. It took a while. Snakes and airplanes. Many, many Bruce is not afraid. The end. I have a hurricane. It took a moment term. for me to, <laughs> can you to do like whole, make can you do the, the whole connection. Thing? Um, we got not anymore. We we used to be able to do it. I used to do the Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. Or the Hanks. I've been everywhere. Yeah. I've been everywhere. So I good. also do one week for karaoke now and again. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know that so song. do I. I'm big into <laughs> Beatles and show tunes for karaoke. That's, yeah. no, I like, yeah. Like a prayer of Madonna. That's my jam. And if I'm, if the, if the karaoke bar is empty and I can be selfish, I'll sing every single fucking minute of Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. I fucking love yes. that song. That is, yes. 
Yes, yeah. I used to know the solo at, or like the, the the ballad part at the end. Oh, where I know like, all of it. We should do it at karaoke. We, we should. Go, we should have an OBP. Get me super night. shit faced, and I'm up. We should, should take have a whole bunch OB of GABA inhibitors. Night. So the, for the first one to five minutes, you're in stage one of REM sleep. You're lightly sleeping. Your muscles can still move and twitch. <laughs> your eyes are moving slowly under their lids, and brain waves begin to slow. From 5 minutes to 30 minutes, stage 2, your body temperature drops. Your eyes stop moving, breathing slows, heartbeat slows, and brain waves have a spiking motion. Brain waves go through periods in stage 2 of just being totally relaxed and having spikes of activity. Some neuroscientists describe it as kind of dreams jump-starting. Kind of sounds have... like my day-to-day life. Yeah? Sweet. Oh, R.E.M. is the name of my American rock band. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. From 30 to 90 You're minutes... lucky I think you're mad at me. From 30 to 90 minutes is stage three of R.E.M. sleep. Breathing heart re- heartbeats are at an all-time low. Um, you're fully relaxed and you're very difficult to awaken. Uh, this stage has been directly correlated with feeling refreshed in the morning. So there's a direct correlation between how much stage 3 REM you get and how refreshed you feel the next morning. And then after 90 minutes, you enter REM sleep, rapid eye movement. Your brain becomes as active as it was when you were awake, as it's dreaming and producing things. Your amygdala, which is the center of emotions, and your thalamus, which is the middleman of all your sensory organs, also become as active as they were when you were awake. So all your sensory organs and the creative parts of your brain are active and burning calories as if you were awake. And you have to be careful about taking benzodiazepines like mm. lorazepam and clonazepam because they will affect REM sleep. Oh, really? Freaking love lorazepam. Yeah, it's a good one. I have it in my purse right now. I have it in my bag right now. I there have it in go. my purse too and also somewhere in my... It's, I have it in my purse. I was prescribed it when I was in... I, I was given... or I was prescribed like 10 pills when I went to uh, the emergency last time. Mm-hmm. It's good Sounds stuff. Right. It is good. But have you have you tried taking clonazepam instead? I have so not because I've only been <laughs> try. I've uh, yeah. This clonazepam is, is way better. Cl- clonazepam is better than lorazepam. Clonazepam is better than lorazepam because it lasts a lot longer. It's got a slightly slower onset. So if you're having a panic attack, clonazepam is probably not the best thing. Mm. But to, as a preventative treatment, like taking a clonazepam every morning is the best thing I've ever done. I oh. I have taken this once where I didn't go straight to sleep and I came home with a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> That's lorazepam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. It causes antiretrograde amnesia, which means you don't just forget about the things that happen after you take it, but it will reset your memory from several hours before you have taken it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I listened to a podcast where you, you were talking about this. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this from you, but yeah, no, this, this, I, Bought me a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Do you do you take it uh, orally or sublingually? Is that sublingually? in the ass? That, that's how I've that's why I've taken it too. <laughs> is that under in the tongue? ass? That's no. under, your that's under your tongue. Under Isn't that orally? No. no. <laughs> orally is down your throat. Orally is through your. He gets his oral sex throat. and anal sex really really confused. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's turned into it's it's there were some awkward nights, <laughs> Mister Bigley. <laughs> you said you wouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> I don't remember doing this. I the last time I did it, I just like worked for the rest of the day. Mm. You probably shouldn't take Larry Zapam alone anymore. Is my official recommendation as a healthcare practitioner. Were the shoes cute? Mm. Unless you want new pairs of shoes. They were. The yes, they were shoes that I wanted. Okay, and well like, then th- that's I just, okay. Then. I wasn't going to buy them, but I just found myself. On Broadway, buying shoes. Mm-hmm. Adult supervision is the recommendation. That well, is as long as it's just shoes, then whatever. <laughs> but sometimes it's like, not just shoes. She's not gonna go <laughs> buy a car. Well. If she wants, if she, if her l- lorazepam Carly self wants to go buy those that cute pair of shoes, I took lorazepam been... once, and when I woke up, the lamp that I had on my bedside table was gone, and instead there were just two fucking wires hanging out of the wall where it was. <laughs> <laughs> I never <laughs> found the lamp. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, it's 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 something. You just yeeted it out of the universe. Yeah, no, every like, every other gone. time I've taken it, it's been at like bedtime and I've been going to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. The journey towards why we depends. need sleep started Sorry. in 1814. Selexa. Citalopram is Selexa. When Mary de Manahir, a scientist in France, kept puppies awake for two to five days and found that they died. 
That's mean. Yes. That's mean. Spoiler. Like, give us a content warning. Sorry. Uh, animal cruelty. Yes, animal cruelty. Don't care about people. If you didn't like that animal. last bit, don't listen to it. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, like, since then, we've learned that sleep is essential because these puppies died within two to five days because this scientist from the 1814s uh, kept <laughs> them awake. The 1814s. Yes. <laughs> Both of them. The golden all of them, medicine. all the eighteen fourteens, <laughs> all the multiverse. Um, you will die from sleep deprivation quicker than you will die from starvation in most cases. Oh boy. Uh, a lack of sleep, with all other variables controlled, is directly correlated with a rise in strokes, heart attacks, diabetes, and dementia. Cortisol. Oh yes, cortisol yeah. spikes. Spikes. <laughs> yeah. Few animals go without sleep, so it must be important. So why do we do it? Mm-hmm. What we do know, uh, during sleep, T cells, T cells flood the body, which boosts the immune system. T cells are a, ki- a kind of immune cell that helps other immune cells to grow. And they're so. they're a memory cell. Yeah, they look at previous invaders, make copies of themselves, and then spread them around. They're called helper T cells. Oh, goody! Cool. Uh, memory is stored. It's been it's been shown in many many studies that. If you study something and sleep and then take a test, you will retain better than if you study something, do not sleep, and then take a test. It helps retain memory more solidly. Could we suggest that's because cortisol blocks memory? Maybe. That that could be a hypothesis. All right. I hypothesize. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. When I was younger and stupider, I took cortisol as like a weight loss pill. Yeah. Why did I do that? Um, because it increases your uh, uh, central nervous system. Okay. So it increases your heart rate, increases your breathing, mm-hmm. and that burns more calories. Right. Sounds like something I should not take. Don't, don't take don't it. Don't take it. It's stupid. Every, every because it, pill it, it, that they say I'm going to gain weight on, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, and cor- I cortisol can cause weight. depression and suicide. Well, maybe yeah. that was the reason why. Yeah, it's not, it's not, especially for teenagers, yeah. cortisol is a really bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to like sneak out and buy like all the weight loss, get skinny quick schemes. Yeah, no, not cortisol. It's not good for you. I don't care. It's been hypothesized mm-hmm. that sleeping is just something that new neurons do when they get together. Um, even when they grow neurons and lab dishes in the lab, they have cycles of low activity and cycles of high activity. It, it's, it's been hypothesized that neurons kind of either chemically know or by an innate part of their biological mechanics, they know that if they start to go into sleep cycles or cycles of low activity randomly, then you just have nerve cells going on and off, and the brain isn't coordinated. Mm -hmm. So it seems like neurons have evolved a way to all go into a state of low activity at the same time. It's kind of like how a heart beats. All the muscles have to coordinate and beat at the same time or else you have a heart attack where all the muscles are just twitching independently. Um, There's a hypothesis that the brain is rebuilding energy, but it doesn't really make sense because the brain burns half as much glucose but increases burning of other sugars which equal about the same amount of energy in dream states. So it doesn't really save energy. So there's not that much to that hypothesis. Uh, maybe clearing out toxins. It seems like there's an uh, there's an increase in, like oh, when cells go through their cellular processes and do the stuff that you need to keep a body together, producing proteins, producing energy, recycling stuff. It all comes out with these byproducts that usually gets filtered out by the kidney and the liver and all that. Lactic acid. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. And uh, there's an increase of that while you're sleeping, but there's also an increase of those when somebody's just relaxing, maybe when somebody's in a low point of activity. So it might not be correlated with sleep. It hasn't been studied. Um, The most promising theory is that sleeping may help a brain's plasticity or its ability to learn new things and do new things. Adaptability. Yeah. Um, Basically, when a new skill is learned, after the next skill cycle, sleep cycle, that skill is maintained. If you learn something and then sleep and then practice it, you do better than if you learn something, don't sleep and then practice it. Hmm. But even that isn't really shown. That's kind of just like studies that haven't been really properly peer-reviewed. Um, they've done experiments where one eye is covered. So they cover one eye um, for 24 hours and keep one eye open. And they let that person go to sleep. And they found that when that person is sleeping, the number of brain connections for the covered eye decrease and the number of connections for the uncovered eye increase. Weird. So it's almost like when you're sleeping, your brain is adapting to new phenomena. It notices that, okay, I haven't been getting any input in this eye for 24 hours. Maybe I should start putting more resources to the eye that is getting information. 
And th- that's something. But And uh, maybe sleep helps glial cells. That's another one. So glial cells are the goop that surrounds the brain. And they are once thought to be totally inert with no function, but they've they've since been found to have some function. They produce cerebral spinal fluid, which is the fluid that the brain and the spine sits in. It's what they extract when you go through a pi- spinal tap. Cool. Um, it's much like blood. It carries nutrients in, waste out, and all that. And also produces and provides nutrients to these myelin sheaths that protect the brain cells and keep them in a good chemical environment to work. And a myelin sheath is just like a cable cover on an electrical cord. That's, yeah, if you strip it much. off, you get MS. There you go. Yeah. And the glial cells are most active during sleep, but all this stuff is just signs of what might be happening. We don't really know. Science hasn't gone that far. What? I, I watched a video where a sleep neuroscientist described it as... You come upon this mysterious engine sitting somewhere, and you can weigh the engine. You can measure the engine's temperature. You can see how hard it's vibrating. All that stuff. You can gain so much information about the engine, but you don't I'd know what the engine is. pick how hard it's vibrating. Oh, yes. That's uh, coming up in the Vibrators episode. Outstanding. I, I go through how that mechanic works. It's fun. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, we don't know what's happening inside this engine. We don't know what the main function of sleep is. We don't know what the brain's doing that's so damn essential. We don't have that answer. And that makes it all the more horrifying when you develop a disease where you stay awake until you die. Not only do we not know why sleep is important, we don't know how to treat people who suddenly stop being able to sleep. Yikes. Okay. And uh, again, this episode was sent in by a listener that paid $50 and recommended it. And thank you very much because I got to dive into some horrifying shit. If you're watching this, perhaps you have trouble sleeping. Well, spare a thought for a group of people who suffer from FFI or fatal familial insomnia. It brings a new and terrifying meaning to the expression dead tired. You're looking at a man who hasn't slept for months. His name is Silvano, and in this video, he's neither fully awake nor asleep. He was basically a very sick-looking man who had not slept for months. Silvano suffered from an extremely rare sleep disorder called fatal familial insomnia, or FFI. It's a genetically linked, incurable brain disorder that destroys the mind's ability to regulate sleep. A former dancer, Silvano could no longer move normally and he was tormented by his inability to rest. Months later, he slipped into a coma and died, his case proving that never sleeping will eventually kill. Here's a typical case. Age 40, Michael Crork. He was a teacher in Chicago. And Sorry, Chicago. He was successful. He was smart. Over, six, over a period of six weeks, he slowly had trouble getting to sleep. Um, he was sleeping eight hours a night, and then seven, and then six, and then five, and then four. And over six weeks, he started losing the ability to sleep. He thought it might be his wife snoring. His wife moved to the couch, but it didn't help. Um, by eight weeks in, he had an inability to, s- to sleep for more than 20 minutes at a time. And that 20 minutes at a time is after hours of trying to get to sleep. Sounds like my nine-month-old. As it progressed, he started having trouble walking. Uh, His sense of taste disappeared. His sense of smell disappeared. His vision started blurring. His sense of hearing went. And he had total cognitive decline where he needed 24-hour care. He couldn't make himself meals. He couldn't get dressed. Um, By six months, he was bedridden, had advanced dementia, was completely dependent (laughs) on caregivers, and he had severe delusions and hallucinations. Um... Eight months after the symptoms started, he died of a heart attack. Holy shit. Michael had fatal familial insomnia. Patient zero for fatal familial insomnia was a Venetian doctor from the 1700s. Through gene mapping and studying DNA, they figured that this guy had the mutation that started this disease. And if you didn't know, fatal familial insomnia is a prion disease. Okay. Or prion. Yeah, prion. One of those two. Prion. Yeah, um, a prion is a misfolded protein. So proteins are kind of like little keys. And when you get a correct protein, it can insert itself into a cell and tell that cell to do a specific thing and everything goes off without a hitch. Oh, neat. If you have a misfolded protein, it can either tell the cell to do something totally wrong, which may kill the cell, 
or it blocks up the receivers of that cell, and just like you block a like a drain pipe, soon the sewage starts flowing over, and that cell dies. Well, and the right protein can't get in to tell it what to do correctly. Yep. And uh, what's more scary is uh, prion prions can't be treated with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. They can't be killed. They're not alive. They're inert protein matter. Even fire. So when we were incinerating um, cows with mad cow disease. Kritzfeldt Jakob's disease in humans. Yep, yep. Human spongiform encephalopathy. Yep, yep. <laughs> when we were incinerating them, we didn't know at the time, but we now know that uh, prions survive fire pretty easily. Which is why in the province of Saskatchewan, it's mm. illegal to cremate someone who's died of Kurtzfeldt Jakob's disease. Oh, yes. Because the idea is that when they're put in the crematorium, the prions can shed and stick to the crematorium operators, which can make them sick, or yep. that it can in fact survive fire and be put up into the sky where it'll rain down upon people and give them uh, all sorts of terrible things. Oh, yes. Crazy. So, uh, patient zero, this Venetian doctor, he died in 1765. Again, he was a very successful uh, physician, and it was much the same story. One day he got a headache, he started not being able to sleep, he slowly went mad and died soon after. Um, he had three children. This disease has a 50-50 chance to be passed on to children. Two of his kids had it. And it's propagated throughout history because of this. Parish books, death certificates, records, doctor's notes, all stated that descendants of his died of epilepsy, fever, um, gastric fever, meningitis, but they were all mis misdiagnosed deaths. Yikes. These were all deaths due to fatal familial insomnia. Of course, people at the time, medicine wasn't advanced enough. You couldn't cut into a brain to see what was going on. So they didn't know what these people were dying from. Onset comes at about early 50s, but the earliest known patient to have gotten this was 16 years old. Um, you have three to eight months to live once you get this disease. Typically, one day, often quite suddenly, you can't sleep for more than a few hours at a time. The onset is usually told in a period of weeks. You go from being able to sleep eight hours through the night mm -hmm. to laying awake for half the night to just get an hour of sleep, and that's all you can do. As it progresses, your pupils shrink, your vision blurs, your sex drive disappears completely. Uh, your blood pressure and pulse elevate. Um, this is where it goes back to the theory that maybe sleep is a kind of rest for the body because the more you go without sleep, the higher your heart rate and blood pressure climb so it puts a bigger and bigger stress on your body you start to sweat heavily day and night again your body is going into overdrive to do what sleep didn't do and you sweat profusely soon you're fighting to go all night to get five to ten minute naps and then after that it becomes impossible to fall asleep what they discovered when they did autopsies of people with this disease, remember how I said the brain stem like, is the, is the off switch for sleep. It's the thing that finally puts the brain to sleep and puts it under. What they found is fatal familial insomnia, these, these prions, prions? Prions. These prions Prion. would go into the brain stem and into the hypothalamus and the thalamus, all the things that are the big off switch for sleep, and it would cover them in holes. They would dig holes in these areas. So basically... It would break the ability for the brain to go to sleep. It would break that off switch that you need to go to sleep. And you're stuck on for the rest of your life until you die. Are there any drugs they could take to defeat this or are they just fucked? They're just fucked. There's no treatments. There's some very proprietary experimental procedures that can reduce the number of these proteins in the blood. But that's just holding off the inevitable. More scarily, this is the scariest part. Um, this just affects the brain stem, kind of the ancient areas of the brain. Like, th what puts you to sleep is a very ancient area of the brain. It, it developed millions and millions of years ago, and it's present across all the animal kingdom. The things that make you you, your frontal cortex, your cortex, the center of thought, awareness, personality, all that is completely unaffected by this disease, which means that as you progress deeper into this and as you become more as you suffer more from a lack of sleep, your conscious mind is awake and aware of everything that's happening. You're aware of how mad you're going. You're aware of how sleepy you are, but you're unable to sleep. They've taken people right to the end. Like, they lose the ability to talk. They lose the ability to use their senses. And the little communication devices that they get sometimes terminal patients to communicate with when they can't do it through regular means, like, they're still aware right up until the moment of death. 
You're just trapped in the cycle of insomnia, not being able to sleep. You lose your coordination, your ability to balance or walk. Your speech starts to slur and then becomes incomprehensible. You don't have the coordination to make your mouth parts work the way you want them to. Um, you have tremors and full body shivers, which are involuntary. And people usually die because their heart rate increases so much, their blood pressure increases so much, that eventually they either die of a heart attack or of... What's what's the medical name for uh, brain inflammation? Encephalitis? Yeah, they die of severe encephalitis. So basically the brain overheating within its own skull. And that's what Gross. usually is the cause of death. Your base, Your body basically goes into... Encephalitic hypothermia. Yep. Yeah, it, it goes into more and more overdrive, and it compensates more and more for what sleep isn't doing. And it becomes where if you're just sitting in a chair, it's like you're running a marathon day and night. That's how hard your body's working. Jeez. Hyperpyrexia. Yeah, and it can only do that for so long, and eventually these people's bodies just give out. And that's the most horrifying disease I've found. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um. Good news. Good news. Um. There's only now this... The this death is very heavily misdiagnosed. It's often it's often misattributed as dementia or other mental disorders. It's often not properly diagnosed and discovered, so we don't know the actual number of sufferers. But the amount of people that we found in North America that have this disease confirmed and had died from it is under thirty people. It sounds symptomatic of Kritzot Jakobs, though. Like yeah, they're yeah. eerily similar. Oh yes, and. Uh, like I said, th this Venetian doctor is patient zero, and they've been able to trace all the people that have died from this back to him. So it, it, that sucks. Oh yeah, yeah. hate be that dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's multiple. I'll, I'll post them on Not the. Not as bad as having genital herpes, but it's pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll post the articles on the on the social media like I always do. But there's multiple articles about descendants of this person. Like going to hospitals to to see if they're gonna die like a super shitty death, <laughs> like when they turn like fifty ish. Oh boy! And there's some people like there's a brother and sister, and they know that that they know that their father had it, and they know that they both have a fifty fifty chance of getting it and all. Oh my yeah. god! San Francisco is a progressive city of hope and ideas. And for Haley and Lachlan Webb, Otherwise we can go to the aquarium. it's a place that might one day help save their lives. So here we are in San Francisco. It's very busy here and much chillier than Queensland. This Aussie brother and sister have travelled halfway around the world to take part in a groundbreaking research project. <laughs> we are at a hospital in San Francisco undertaking a sleep study. Um, and as you can see, I'm looking more robot than human at the moment. They are on a mission to find a cure to the rarest of diseases. A waking nightmare that is killing their family. One day, Haley and her brother will wake up and never be able to go to sleep ever again. So that's uh, Fatal Familiar Insomnia. Um, thank you for sending it in. Thank you for submitting it. Uh, again, I'm going to insert the real name of the person that submitted it. The Rhea Stratus. I have him on Twitter, too. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah, if you would like to submit an episode, you can make us talk about anything of your choosing. Even Literally. You I'll say whatever word you want me to. Give me something fucking ridiculous, and I'll take it seriously as fuck. Yep. I promise. Me, too. If you want me to research the origins of cotton candy, yeah, fucking on it, man. Did the dentist invent cotton candy? I, I don't know. That, I believe that's that why was, we need to research yeah. it. That sounds like so. that sounds like insider trading. And also, they call it fairy floss in England. If well, I get their teeth rotten, well, I'll be coming in the door it, real quick. It uses a surprisingly little amount of sugar mm -hmm. to make a lot of cotton candy. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 mind blowing. But yes, you use like a tablespoon of sugar is in. Like, one like a of, whole big thing. Really? Like, like a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm. that's why a dentist created it as a sweet treat that that doesn't like Interesting. Your, much. Sugar. This is okay. Don't take my word because just learned this from somewhere. Word of mouth. <laughs> but but it does make sense because of the fact that 
it's a very tiny amount. I have made cotton candy before mm-hmm. of sugar that goes in to make cotton candy. Uh, right. I think part of it also is it is just sugar though. Uh, <laughs> part of it is uh, when you're like eating it, it stays you know on your teeth or in contact with your teeth for less than say if you were like sucking on like a, a strawberry candy or like chewing or on a like chewing a, on yeah, something you know like a butterscotch or it something. Just, you know, you you consume most of the sugar before it even you know, mm. comes in contact with the teeth. You know? And and you can have like a, a little bit of cotton candy goes a long way mm-hmm. because it's so sweet. I hate it. Oh, I That is candy. totally fair because mm-hmm. it is so sweet. I like it. He it's hates true. everything though. So. I don't. Pizza. They both hate everything. Uh, I had a really good ham and mushroom pizza two nights ago. I'm from a big where? Oh, you're eating pizza? Domino's. Okay. I'm a Domino's. big sucker for fun food. And ca- swan cotton pizza. candy is a, is a fun food. pizza is the best. It's they the put tip. sesame yep. seeds on the crust. Mm. My mm-hmm. my partner who is uh, gluten, or not gluten intolerant, it's something else. Celiacs? I don't know what it is. Okay. No, and what it's it? not celiac either. It's mm-hmm. like something that is often with bread that makes his gut just go crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, sticky wicket syndrome. And, and, no, it's not that. But it's, <laughs> but it's not the gluten because... Yeah. But he, we figured out the other week that he can eat a swan pizza, and he's oh. the happiest. Ooh, swan makes good pizza. He's the happiest mm-hmm. boy alive. My favorite kind of pizza from a red swan pizza is the spicy paneer. Spicy paneer. I like. I like the honey garlic chicken. Oh, Ooh. I don't eat chicken. My um, hu- my husband really likes the t- teriyaki food. chicken. Yes. Finish your episode. Sorry. <laughs> Here, to finish it off, here are tips for a good sleep. And before you feel guilty for not following these, I don't follow them either. And I have them written in my own fucking book. So <laughs> turn off the phone about 20 minutes before bed. Nope. 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 <laughs> have a consistent wake and sleep cycle. Nope. nope. No. Try and keep s- screens and other light sources out of your bedroom. No. Nope. Wait, what? There's not yeah. supposed to be my laptop. Reduce daytime naps. <laughs> nope. Fuck you. I get. I love. Let naps. me have my naps. Nap. <laughs> I, need I don't them. have time to nap. What is that? And take a melatonin supplement uh, if you have trouble getting to sleep. But not for like five years straight. No, yeah. if you're taking it for more than two weeks for every day, more than two weeks in a row, you should consult your doctor. That's what I the back of the bottle says. says. on the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I take 1.5 times the maximum dose of Zopaclone every night to <laughs> medicate myself to sleep. I have this really heavy indica strain named Blue Bear, <laughs> and if I really need to get to sleep, I just grind up a little bit of that nug and just take a good bong hit. Mm. Usually, I don't know why, but when I when I use my vaporizer with Blue Bear, it doesn't get me as sleepy when I, I use my bong. So. Who's all these? Anyways, I hope none of you succumb to this horrible death and get a good night's sleep. So, I've been Ud Gallifrey. Sage Murray. Leon Felger. Have a good night. Oh, and in studio. Don't forget about me, Carly. <laughs> and Richard Bigley. And Who's Richard? like regularly in studio. Oh, yes. Are you complaining? Is that no. a complaint I hear? A tone Never. Of, tone tension of in the studio. No. Don't say tension in the studio. We're falling apart. People on Twitter, you're our only hope. Yell at Sage. <laughs> Do not yell at me. I will cry. Okay. You, you can yell at me. I can. No, I can't take it. I'm, I'm, I'm. If I've actually done something wrong, I'll cry. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. If not, then fuck you. Have a good night. Love you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you guys have a wonderful sleep. Um, here's an instrumental tune submitted to us by somebody who's a friend of the show that is really excited to hear his music on the radio, and, you know, I I love making people giddy about their own projects, you know. This podcast started out as a project of our own, and it's look what it's grown into. So, the palate cleanser is A Blaze Within by the artist Offertory. Enjoy, and see you in the after show.
Back with an Ood Only After Show. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of a computer technical malfunction, and uh, we lost the recording where the three of us read the new patron, so I'm going to do it. But rest assured, in some universe there wasn't a computer malfunction, and all three of us are introducing the new patrons to the cult. So, here are the new Cult of Alhalla members. First is Evan Adelaide. Welcome to the cult. And Corrupted Mask, which is a very, very mysterious name. Are you under the mask, or are you simply a mask? Does the mask represent you? Or is the mask a metaphor? Who knows? Welcome to the cult. Also, welcome to the cult, LDR. Now, I won't tell what LDR stands for or who it is, but... um. You guys have heard their voice at least as many times as there are episodes. Uh, They're the one that sing Occulte Veritatis in the start, and thank you for contributing. Next up is Carly Frazier. Thank you for signing up to the Patreon. Thank you for coming to the cult. Itchy robes on the left. Thank you for signing up. Brian Bonnell. You know, there's a Stephen Bonnell that I watch on Twitch that argues with alt-right people. You know, it's... We need more good leftist debaters on Twitch. I'm not sure if I'm quick enough to do that, but... We need more hardcore leftist debaters to take on the rising alt-right surge. So, hello Brian Bonnell, welcome to the cult. Hello Dennis Wager, welcome to the cult. Come in, 
Get Comfortable, Praise Val. Next up is Siren Petal. Welcome to the cult. Kennedy Griggs. I knew a Kennedy. Actually, I know a Kennedy. We're playing a Rifts game right now, and uh, I'm playing a grizzled old war veteran who had his brain ripped out and stuck into an android body that looks exactly like an eight-year-old girl. And I haven't decided whether I want to have a voice modulator and have a little girl voice, or if I want to have this, like, 30 years of chain-smoking grizzled old veteran's voice coming out. I, I kind of like that as well. Um, next up is Keir. Keir Dark. Thank you for signing up to the Patreon, putting your money where your mouth is, sending money to us every month, and growing this cult. Hail Val. Next up is... Oh no. It has, it's spelled X-E-R-A-C-I-A. -A. So, Exteria? Exia? Oh man. If, I, I'm, I definitely got this wrong. Hit me up on the Discord. Oh, for those of you who don't know, if you sign up for the Patreon, you get onto the Discord. Ain't that nice? Um, yeah, so just hit me up on the Discord, and I will say it correctly next time. And you'll get your own special redo at the end of an episode. Also up is Robert Carson. Thank you for signing up. Thank you for putting your money with your mouth is and supporting independent media. You know, we're upgrading our systems, and we're starting to go on some field trips and ghost hunting missions and stuff like that, and we're going to put your money to good use. So we appreciate every penny. Next up is Emmy. Welcome to the cult. Hail Val. Simon Van Bevan. Welcome to the cult. Thank you for joining. And last, thank you, Jacob Gadzella. Thank you for coming to the cult. Thank you for signing up. We appreciate all of you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. Like, we're, you know, we're running a pretty, like, hardcore cult here. Like, we're getting into some big things, like general cosplay contests and all that. But, you know, it, we still love you all. We still want this to be a little bit, a little bit new age, a little bit feel good. That's the kind of tone we want. We want to be playing guitars in meadows while smoking a shitload of weed. Yeah, so, thank you for contributing, thank you for joining the Patreon. I have been Oud Gallifrey with the Culte Veritatis. We sure as hell appreciate you guys inviting us into your ear canals each and every week, and we will see you next time.